questions and, and the audience can chime in anytime you, you think it is, is really needed. Uh, so what I think first probably is for, uh, continuing your, your presentation, do you see any attempts in, in your organization to use IPSM methods outside of IT? In Oracle we do. We already have uh, HCM. Most of the products are, uh, I mean, whatever Brenda was talking, we already have the HCM mm -hmm. uh, because HR analysis was uh, part of the SQLsoft. And then we took SQLsoft, we have adopted it. And HR is already using these uh, applications. And in fact, we are using all the applications that we sell outside. We use it in internally also. Nice. So you are eating your own stuff? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we do as well. Uh, if I need to get more business cards, or when I started, or I need more touch key for trade show, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Everything's in our service management tool. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what is interesting for me from your presentation, of course, this is just the beginning for, for IPSM outside of IT, that, that still it is in the, in the incident problem change dance. Right. So, is there any any anything beyond that, like managing the life cycle, for example? Well, in financial management, okay. I, I can tell you. you now, I will speak um, from the client perspective. So, we work with clients, and and the more mature clients really are starting to press what I call like the advanced service management, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. and getting into the project portfolio and service mm -hmm. portfolio management, yeah. the demand management, and financial management. There, they, those who have been at service management now for a decade, they absolutely are starting to move into some of the advanced areas. Yeah. And, and it is more to the other folks to tell anything about uh, the first question. Do you think your, your HR people, your, your legal people are ready to, to jump on this background? Or this is, this is a weird thing? Uh, we're already engaged with them. Right. So, our payroll is already fully involved, our facilities, our HR is taking the next step forward, I'm trying to convince them to get away from the email. <laughs> the, the challenge today, I think, is getting people to think that getting them away from email is really that big of a leap, and that people are gonna be that upset over it. They've done studies, we know that people are okay either moving into the mobile or the portal, that email is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. How many goes both sides. I mean, you. I mean, we, at least at this point of time, like Brenda said, in future things will be different. But at this time, I see um, emails will continue for a while, along with the workflow with mobile and whatever you want to uh, add, in, um, like you know, notifications. Notifications. I, yeah. I mean, to create tickets. Oh. <laughs> but service management as a concept has always been outside of IT for a very long time. Right. Hospitals, retailers, a lot of folks have already been using it. In yeah, at least pieces and bits. Yeah, perfect. perfect. I think that the real uh, game changer when they embrace the service concept, the service life cycle, the continual uh, process improvement yeah. approach, lean, and so on. Yeah. And those were certainly born out of, out of the fundamental framework, so yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and we, we saw uh, and some examples from an application where the different services are on the same platform, so it's not the same. Yeah. Uh, do you see that that's an opportunity? Because, uh, frankly, my one of my problems in, in Kaiser Prominente, we have at least 17 uh, service catalogs at this time. Different uh, tools, different way of implementation, different approach totally. Uh, everybody is doing almost the same, but not exactly the same. So, what do you think? Why it is there? So what can we do? Well, I'll, I'll take one thing. Certainly, if you think from the lens of the customer, mm -hmm. that would drive them nuts. Seventeen service catalogs, right? Drive them crazy. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, 
and it, really, if you think with the lens of the customer, like how how can you make their job easier, right? That their work's not going to go away. So if we can right. do it with process or tool to make their job just a little bit easier and more effective, then I I see a positive, and that that would be a right thing to do. This is a little bit like like continuing with email, right? Yeah. Using the the, the common tool that they are yeah. accustomed to. Dashboards, dashboards will uh, have, I like the concept of single uh, glass. Single pane and glass. Panel, yeah, yeah. Panel glass. Um, because that's necessity now, because if while you're traveling, like uh, people, executives are traveling, they won't like to see everything in one you know, place and not be connecting to a VPN to go for one application and uh, you know, getting into another network for another application. Mm -hmm. um, so having them all in this single, Glass, glass. Yeah. Glass yeah. is a great concept and we are driving towards it and it's more the customers who are driving that right. because they want to see that. And this is somewhat going back to your comments about the Y generation. Yeah. This is their work, oh, yeah. right? They don't want to learn another GUI. They don't want to use another tool. They, yeah. they want everything on the, on the same portal, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and, and when you say the same portal, not not a different portal for each of those different groups. Yeah. And to skip ahead, not to have them, like you said, you're not teaching them what an incident is and what a request is and all these things. Just a search mechanism. Yeah. That's it. That's We're getting away from clicking through five, seven deep. Yeah. It's just type in what you're looking for and it will help you find that. And then go straight to the mobile app with just a search. Yeah. You know, I kind of use, um, one of the analogies, to, to your point there, I, I was headed back to Chicago uh, and I needed, I was going out, to, going out to a client and I was, I mean, I had no time, no time to waste. You know, I run to the rental car, get the rental car, it's in C4 or whatever, and I get there and I'm like, duh, God, and I loaded my bags, no keys. Oh my gosh, I don't have time to haul, it's all out, go back to the firm, I'm like, wait, 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 wait hold on, wait, wait, wait. Uh, what is this? There's a button. Push start. It was the first time I'd ever seen oh. one, right? Now, I know how to drive. I had never seen that. And that was my that was my aha moment. This has got to be Google intuitive. This car was Google intuitive. I didn't have to go in and say, hey, could you teach me how to drive this car with a button? I don't know this button thing. It was just a natural, right? And to your point, you need to make it so so naturally. You don't have to you just need to teach the search mechanism. Well recently we, we had a, a visitor here who talked to us. Um, and one of the things he said really resonated with me, and I, I think you were there also, where when you're at home and you're looking on things on your mobile device, either Google, Amazon, Uber, whatever it is, it's quick, it's easy. The minute they walk in through those doors at work, everything goes to the Stone Ages. <laughs> it takes weeks. Uh, either to get something resolved or to open a ticket, you have to go through all these different, and you get lost half the time. We, as an IT uh, organization, need to start looking how we emulate those those apps and so forth. That's our challenge today. So I think from Palo Alto Network's perspective, we are not thinking so much of a unified portal or, or a place where everybody can go. <coughs> we are thinking more of how do you how do you engage in a more easy way and use the same platform. Mm -hmm. So whether it's mobile or some social networking tools uh, to get the answer quickly rather than focusing on bringing them all to one portal. Yeah. That's where we are we are actually discussing that a lot. Right, and we are, of course, using Agile and Scrum, so we're not waiting for the waterfall where it's going to take us two, three years to get to where we want to be. There's going to be different phased approaches to it, but we are, we're looking at using Siri to open tickets, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. They're saying 50% of searches are now done on mobile, and 20 or 25% of them are done just with voice. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's only going to continue to grow. Yeah. And we need to start looking at those, not looking at what we think could be uh, something that people are using today. Where are people going? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. yeah. Yeah, which probably means more diligent user interfaces, uh, forget the forms, uh, try to, to pick the pieces of information from a, from a natural sentence or something like that. Exactly. You were, yeah, I have a comment. So, and I'm interested in, it sounds like it's kind of along the same lines. I have a very large customer here in the Bay Area, VMware. And uh, the, the guy is so funny. He was telling me a story of how the guy was walking around the campus over at VMware. 
he got attacked by one of those eagles. The big bird came down, attacked him, <laughs> scratched his head, big talons. He was running into the receptionist. The receptionist had to open a ticket, and then she had to, uh, had to fill out a form for security. The guy is bleeding in the lobby. <laughs> and the CTO of VMware said to me, you have got to get me something that it's, uh, we're all ITIL, I get it, I get it, but uh-uh. We just need to have uh, my head is bleeding. I want to be able to have like Alexa or Siri on steroids. Eventually make it AI based. So I mean that it's smart. I mean that's where we're going, and that's how we have to help you guys think about the next gen and, and where we're going on that kind of stuff. But he was just. It was so frustrating because the poor guy, they had to open up two forms, a ticket, and oh, no. they had to get approval, and the poor guy. And funny story, true story, just ha it happened like two weeks ago. So <laughs> I'm seeing that even though we built ourselves on ITIL, which we needed. Companies now are saying, okay, great, but we need to strip out, strip out some of that for the end users. And that sounds like what you guys are saying about Palo Alto, and I'm just wondering if others are also feeling that same way. Well, I, just to add to that, I think we built these things in IT. So all of our terminology is customers and service and SLA and incident. And it doesn't resonate with business. Like to your presentation, it just doesn't resonate. And that's why, um, if we want to adopt, if we want them to adopt these best practices, it has to be done differently. Yeah, which is a kind of funny because if some some of the older older people, nobody's older, just me. So <laughs> uh, so we remember uh, the time before I did. We didn't have the common language. Uh, we didn't have words like incident, service, function. Does everybody is the same? And, and and we had a lot of trouble with that, definitely. So this is this is a, a higher level of the same confusion today, and we should develop the common language together with the business. Uh, I had a, a recent experience in the last couple of months. We have developed a common maturity assessment, process maturity assessment method with the business. And it was painful at the beginning because we didn't use the same language. Everybody talked about different, different uh, things or, or used different words for the same things. So that, that was really painful at the beginning. After a couple of months, is, we are speaking the same language. We don't have any problem. We, we even don't remember what was our problem at the beginning, <laughs> right? So it takes time. This is a cultural shift, probably. But, but yes, we have to extend our, our language break down the barriers between yeah. the business and that. But I think that the language that you have is very important for the back end, for the IT, for right. just for IT. Mm -hmm. But we need to know that we can't go and communicate that way, like you said, to the customers. Yeah. Uh, we need to know the difference between an incident and a request to be able to categorize correctly and then be able to send these tickets to the right groups automatically without having someone review everything and so forth. But in order, to, but we're not going to speak that way to the customer. Yeah. You know, you were talking about case. We use the word ticket only because when we use the word case, they get confused also. Oh, yeah. They think Salesforce. <laughs> so we've started using the word ticket. We're trying to be as simple as possible. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, what you said is exactly right. You can't speak that way. To that right. Way. And nor do they. We, they don't need. They don't want us to. And there's yeah. no reason. To. Yeah. Right. But you know, the business leaders. Most of them are incredibly bright, very well educated, right. and when you talk to them about tactics, you know, whether it's problem management and the way we try to quote do root cause analysis, whatever terminology, they understand the tactical, the strategic values of these things, and generally they're pretty quick to say, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Uh, it always turns into a leadership struggle between, quite frankly, you know, their leadership and culture. And quite frankly, today in particular, we've become a fairly lazy, undisciplined culture. And that's what they're really addressing is the cultural issue, not the tools, right? And you know, and I deal with these kids, I've got a bunch of them working for me, right? <laughs> you know, the idea that we'd actually would have quite a release management process for this piece of software that we're gonna go out and run, you know, four hundred million dollars with a mortgage valuation, you know? The idea we should test it first. Oh, that's lazy. Let's see the introduction. <laughs> that's, I think, one of the real core issues. And it doesn't matter if you're talking IT or their approach to how they do financial management. I mean, there's a cultural divide there from, you know, quote the old mainframe warriors, right? Yeah, you know, done this way. The SAP guys and what you're dealing with. And that's really what's unraveling. 
I mean, they've really taught me the second law of thermodynamics. It's always <laughs> heading to chaos. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, you're, you're actually bringing up a really good point. And, and you started um, mentioning it too, Stephen. That's the, you don't want to throw it, there's structure is not all bad. Just because it's structure doesn't mean all red tape. But if we can find the, some, some of the simplistic ways to think about it and, and speak about it, that's a big deal. To your point, Steve, you, you mentioned, all right, so there's there's requests, there's things that go on in the background. That's always going to go on. Now, maybe your re the request method is through a Siri or an Alexa. It's like, okay, great, great. Kind of the, and I think people are kind of, doing, this is a whole, an entirely different topic, with, <laughs> with Agile, right? And Agile doesn't mean no planning. And, yeah. and they're, we're finding some shops that are using as just an excuse for lack of planning. That doesn't, exactly. that doesn't usually end well. No, it is. Exactly right. Exactly right. So. To take the structure that we have developed from the years, we don't want to throw all that out, but we do need to make the interaction channels a lot more intuitive, for sure. And, and I think to, to the point of just get it out there, get it out there, you know, we hear Mark Zuckerberg, for example, saying, you know, move fast and break things. We, we all know that as part of IT, you we can write the checks. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we need to do two things. We need to deliver, and we need to do, we need to do it fast. But there has to be a point where there's some checks and balances. Because otherwise, no one's going to like it when you deliver broken stuff all the time. <laughs> there, there has to be a point. You have to have some testing. I can yeah. tell you in some I, of the big IT shops I'm working with, that IGIL stuff is going out the door and they're going right back to you know, planning things out and says, hey, it's going to take us a year to get there. Yeah. And the reason why is, you know, the idea of testing, it's really interesting to me. I've watched, for example, I'm sorry, this is off topic. You know, I watched the QA groups go to nothing, and now the QA groups are going back. You know, and now we can't hire enough people to actually book test before we roll forward, right? So we're but going through that cycle. Are you going back to the whole approval model and all that before you release things, or is it still you uh, log it and you audit it kind of model? It's such a disaster, <laughs> you know? I mean, I got a piece of software I've been dealing with. It's primarily built in Java. It's got some Python on it, JavaScript. You know, Anyway, and how do you manage that? I come in and say, hey, there's this thing called release management. Hey, there's this thing called design. You know, we <laughs> have architectural drawing. You know, and I feel like I'm out of sync. What are those SDLC? Yeah, <laughs> what are those service level requirements? Why don't we talk about those? And hey, I have this thing. Have you ever heard of this thing called an SLA? <laughs> Let me show you how this works. I say okay, everything changes, yeah. everything remains the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's about often that work with. <laughs> Go, ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, ITL being a UK framework, right? Uh, Bay Area, this is completely a technology-driven place, basically. Okay. Uh, when you talk about like ITL process framework, there is de these people have moved mountains. Okay. Uh, I don't know, like you know, there are definitely the resistance, like when you are trying to sneak in process. That's where, like, you know, whatever you're talking about, like, in you know, a release, they are successful still. Okay, mm -hmm. so, like, you know, how is that, like, you know, ITSMF USA is going to address this? I am an ITL expert myself. I had my challenges in the initial days. If you're talking about UK, I definitely agree. I worked with UK clients. I've been in UK too, actually. Uh, there, even the clients are ITS uh, expert certified, so their questions are more mature. Whereas here, it's completely driven. Unless until you have the technical touch. Uh, being okay. a delivery manager, unless until you understand that it be networking or HANA cluster or anything, you even the delivery manager should know what they are like in a, uh, uh, looking for. Let it be root cause analysis. Uh, asking just five whys or like in a fishbone is not going to work here, right? Uh, uh, so how is that like ITSM of USA is planning to address this actually? So that's my question. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll take I'll take the start of this. I'm sure everybody has some thoughts here, but certainly. And I and I would I would argue I yes originating I told originating in the UK absolutely Australia right Netherlands UK but it but it is highly embraced in North America and and what I would say is that this is where we usually see breakpoint mm -hmm. when you in Silicon Valley start up start up things fast got up you know time to market time to market but then they grow right they go public the second round of funding oh crap we can't scale this by all huddles and hey will you do me a favor that is not scalable and so you usually see it between the second and third round of funding yeah. where they realize we need some structure we need some structure and we need some processes that can be consistent repeatable you know these words right consistent repeatable documented that 
keep the new trending on, and that's usually when the, uh, we're gonna need to use something. Uh, what is this? I told, okay. I, my, I heard this on the golf course. A lot of people are using it. But, I, I, but to your point, uh, not to let it off, and to remember, Chayan, uh, that it's guidelines. They're not standards, right? They are not standards, they're guidelines. And so Kaiser's service management, Framework doesn't look exactly like Palo Alto Networks or Oracles, right? They're, they're, you need to drive your own car. You need to run your own business. But those are a set of common guidelines, best practices, if you will, to do it with, with some structure that, that can lend itself to scalability, consistent, repeated documents. So, and I, that's usually, uh, that's where we usually see breakpoint is when they need to scale. If you're going to stay a startup, yeah, sure, they can probably get by by the seat of the pants for a while. But it can't scale, not when you're trying to go global, different geos, can't do it. So I can't speak for ideas, but mm -hmm. I can speak for um, how we are thinking about this problem yeah. and the Bay Area is full of such examples. Exactly. Um, there's guidelines and there's general lightweight processes mm -hmm. which we want to adopt, mm -hmm. but we don't want to slow down our, our pace. Mm -hmm. So things like CICD and uh, release management trains and automatic builds and deployments, they are still going to happen. And we're not, and we're not going to look for approvals for every step like we used to. We're going to do those things, and we'll log and audit those things as as a difference. Um, so that's one way we are thinking about it. Something like a vanilla trail. Yeah, something like a vanilla trail. Yeah. yeah. And also for us, for it to be successful, it has to come from top down. Yeah. And uh, we have seen this practically in Oracle. You know, uh, there are groups which start up like a startup within Oracle, but. After a while, we adopt, we adopt a process. We adopt a, you call it any uh, framework. Uh, ITIL could be an easy framework to explain. And if the management accepts it, every other organization accepts it. Yeah. And it makes it more easy, because then everybody's talking the same language. Yeah. And, and it's more easy for the process to move. And we have seen it successfully implemented. But you have to be careful with the word ITIL these days. Everyone automatically assumes that it's bureaucracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and some people, the minute you start talking about it, they just they shut down. Yeah. So I think our challenge is to show that we're we're gonna build it with automation. I mean like 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 Pradeep was talking about, if you use Chef and Chef automatically feeds the change management tool with the configurations, then the person doesn't even have to fill out the form. And as soon as it's done, it initiates on the date and time that it was designed to go out, the release. So trying to make things easier for folks with the tools we have, but still stay within the guidelines that we've created. That's, that's our challenge is to do those kind of things. Not just say, fill out this form, it's five pages long, and you'll get that change window in about five months. <laughs> so, and a lot of companies are like that. Yeah, and a good example of this is, I think, what you said just now, Silicon Valley companies, if it's done by top down, Take an example of Netflix. They may not call it ITIL, but they're following all the ITIL principles. Yeah, they are. They have Eureka server, which is which which consists of a registry of all their services, mm -hmm. which is a CMDB, if you will. Wow. Right? They have a break model. They have a chaos monkey they build, they, which goes and break things. Oh. And then it will automatically build things. So which is a, which is a kind of a model of, you know, plan to check out, you know, doing checking, checking your services. Yeah. So they're following all those principles, and you use, you know you use Netflix every day. Exactly. You know you don't don't even know when it goes down. It goes down when the AWS goes down really bad, and that's yeah. also they are come kind of working on. So you can implement that, but it has to come down architecturally, top down approach. Exactly. And they it have cannot very, be, They have a very they have probably one of the most mature yeah. environments that I've ever seen when it yeah. comes to that. And they have they have open source all those development thing, and that has become part of your. Uh, uh, like you know, the DevOps model and you know infrastructure as a code. So the developers do that; they, they follow that. So I think that is a very good case uh, study if you really want to see how in a technology company using concepts like ITIL, they don't call it ITIL. That exactly. Exactly. It just yeah. took them a really long time to get there. <laughs> I mean, they've automated everything, so they do changes every day, all the time. But they, their rollback is quick. LinkedIn is the same thing; they do massive changes every day. But they have it built in, the rollback capability. In a lot of these companies, they go to every two weeks or every month deployments because they don't have that built yet. And until they can build it, they shouldn't move to that one. Right. Yeah, because you can't, you can't get the 
the cycles in the cadence fast right. enough in a manual yeah. yeah. But to, to your point, and I think that's something, I, honestly, I, that's where the term, and honestly, it happens a lot. I told ITSM, like, interchangeably, because in many companies, like, that was a four-letter word, don't even say that here. And so you started hearing the use of service management, IT service management. Now, I think we're, we're in what we talked about today, was to, like, even dropping the IT. Talk about service management. Mm -hmm. Happens to be an IT, happens to be an HR, but it's service management, right? Yeah. And, and, uh, and quick, quick to deliver, right? Quick, effective, and uh, zero defect delivery. Well, like to your point of a uh, startup, uh, startups don't even know if they're going to be in business at the end yeah. of the year. Right. So they don't need any of this. Yeah. They're trying yeah. to survive. Yeah. They borrow the process, though. Exactly. Yeah. But once you're a mature company, you have you, you have to, uh, the streets are expecting certain things from right. you. You're a public company. Yeah. You have to be able to provide that, that structure. So my experience is it's very difficult to actually convince leadership um, that it's worth their investment. I basically, I worked for uh, Sun Microsystems for a number of years. I was part of quote the Sun Readiness. Our sale was, in effect, we gave it away. Really, uh, that if we could come in and help them resolve some of their business practices, like release and change and so forth, around Oracle on Sun, um, that impact would result in us getting less calls and costing us significantly less money. And we could absolutely prove it. I mean, I could show you that a thirty-five thousand dollar investment could potentially reduce. You know, future costs by multiple millions. I really, at all the numbers, hardly ever sold. Yeah. Just yeah. could not get them to rationalize that spending a few thousand dollars was this yeah. huge cost avoidance. And then I'd run into these guys like two years later, and it's like, hey, you know, we really should have done this. We had this multi-million dollar yeah. incident. It's like, yeah, got it. You know what? But I, I think some of the, the demographics are going to help with that. Uh, in that, not only not only is cost justification. But to your point, the millennials are demanding it. They won't work. They will not tolerate these archaic, stony systems, right? They're just not going to have it. So I think that there might be, into our, that might work favorably. It's like, make the, it's, it's about productivity. I don't know. They like right? chaos as far as I'm concerned. I don't know. I, I, I agree with them because I think that convincing executives of this, this is process development. There's nothing sexy about no, process development. Not sexy. It's boring. <laughs> it, and how do you sell something like that? It's not a shiny new app that I'm going to create for you. So we need to find a new four-letter word for it and, <laughs> find, and make it sound like it's innovative and technology-centric. And maybe then we can sell it. I don't know. It's just the next ultimately, challenge for the next meeting. I'm up yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the ultimately, the real core problem is that when you deal with these guys, you are really ultimately talking about quote, investing into people, their own people, right? But we need to do some training, we need to buy some, right? Versus go out and buy hardware. I've watched yeah. these guys write a check for $2 million after I've told them, hey, you know, you're gonna waste three quarters of this. You don't need that. We ought to spend $200,000 training your people to use it more effectively. And you know what check they write? Buy more tools. Buy more tools. Now, it's insane. They won't spend the money or time or provide the real leadership to change kind of the chaos that they live in, but we're willing to spend a lot of money on you know, something that then goes to waste. But it, why, it's why, is that, why do you think that happens? Uh, part of it's driven by the balance sheet. But the aspect yeah, of the other things. Yeah, the, I, I think a lot of it I mean, is that they're sold. IT execs, right? You're driven by the balance sheet. I think a lot of these companies out there are able to sell them this new shiny tool every time. Correct. And what I tell them is all these tools require resources. But like these app machines, if you actually work hard at it, you're <laughs> going to get a six pack. But you got to apply resources. <laughs> <laughs> All of them are. You know, <laughs> but you got to use it. You know, so it's. But they think, no, no, no. I'm just going to move on to this next one right. and to this next one. And before you know it, you've got all these tools that do the same thing, and none of them work because you've never spent the time on one of them to really make Provided it work. Provided the leadership to drive it into place. Yeah. What is the business case that we're solving? It really comes down to service design. What are we designing? What problem are we trying to solve? And service management, after we've designed it, how do we make sure it's continuing to deliver the value that the business requires? And a lot of the times, it's easier to buy a shiny new box that's more current and more upgraded and less buggy than it is to fix the buggy process for yep. the deliver service with. The really for nice guys, we are, we are going through the, the usual track. We have started with IT service management. 
then identified, okay, everything is IT in that sense. It is just service management. No, we are talking about management. Because we have a management problem, right? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting that certain cultures, so for example, the Germans have embraced this inside and out, up and down. Well, they're culturally affiliated right. to think this way and to work as a team, the Japanese as well. When you go to Japan, I mean, everything is IT service management, one form or another. It's part of their culture and how they organize themselves. You know, we're a very anti-organizational, anti-authoritarian, mm -hmm. anti-intelligence, yeah, you know, anti-structure. We love chaos. Thanks for the, the entry because I can tell you <coughs> one of my favorite stories that I, it was uh, 96 and I was learning uh, Toyota production system, the uh, previous name of, of me. And, and we had a, a Japanese trainer and, and he was talking about different things and, and somebody from the audience asked, okay, okay, that's fine. What if somebody doesn't want to follow the process? And he stopped, stopped in the track and, and asked, why? He didn't understand the question. How it can happen, right? This is, this is the culture. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I used to work with Toyota too. And in, in, in Japan, the culture is everybody complies. <laughs> Here in America, it's like herding cats. But what, what I was going to say is, is um, we, maybe we've moved past this, but I have a customer, they're Amdocs. And, um, they build um, ROI and they build a really strong business case before they do anything, before they buy anything. So I have to work with them a lot up front to build that case. But once they build the case, they show it to management and then they get the buy-in and then they move forward. But then they also go through and they prove it. And then they report back the results of, you know, of doing that. And so that can be an effective pattern to, to do things is, is is to actually talk about the results that you get with the business case and go back and th then you get more confidence you build um, that sort of rapport with the, with the management and and you get easier it's easier to get a yes in the future <laughs> for what yeah. you're trying to do unfortunately our time is is limited here and, and your time i i assume so let, let me switch gears and i will ask you one by one uh, what do you expect from from the the SFP link to do? So where where can we help you guys with with our activities the most? What do you think? I think uh, one of the things that I find the most useful out of these kind of gatherings is for us to exchange ideas. We're all in the same field, so we all know what doesn't work or what hasn't been successful, but we don't know those little things that really did great in the organization. And a lot of us are trying new things. For example, this building here is a test bed for our new building that we're building. So we're trying beacon technology, we're trying all kinds of different things. Let me tell you, some of it is not good at all. You know, and some of it is really good. Um, so I think these kind of uh, groups, getting together, exchanging ideas of what's worked, what's been successful, that, I think, would be the most beneficial. Yeah. Very good. So for me, I mean, on the same vein, um, I think we can have a structure. I, I do believe the companies like Google and Facebook who are very open-minded and very free-spirited, and they do big software development, some fantastic software development yeah. in these structures. And if we can just learn from those practices and improve on it, uh, my personal motive is to bring them into our company here. Awesome. Um, and go that way rather than be very, you have to do it this way or the other way because that I already know will not work here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to learn how other companies are doing it and how we can bring that here. Ravi, what do you I agree with Steve um, that you know we are so busy in a particular process and uh, uh, and it's like a like a well smooth iron uh, oiled uh, machine you know it's going fine <laughs> then we say okay let it go let it be you know running but there are times when we meet like this and it's good to you know exchange ideas and see what other issues are there in the market and what, what other ideas we can borrow like i like the concept of give and take or whatever yeah, you yeah. said pick you know? up and drop off pick up yeah. and drop off yeah that's a good concept you know where 
uh, and that can happen only in a forum like this where you're free out of your you know um, uh, workplace and uh, exchange ideas First of all, I'd like to thank you very much. You were inspirational. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I live and work in the center of the vortex. Now, I mean, my life is truly chaos. Um, and I must like it, because that's where I've been. <laughs> yeah. uh, I come to these kind of things because, you know, people like you inspire me. I, I get it. I know we can, someday we will get there. We will bring order to the chaos. <laughs> That's all I want is order to the chaos, please. You got the new tagline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's told well, I mean, really, you know, I, I started with, uh, you know, I went to work for a company called Oracle. I was set, hired by the CIO to do something and it's like, you know, change management. I don't know what that is. I had someone Call me and says, "Hey, there's this little blue book you can buy that'll tell you how to do change management." And that's how I started. The red book, the blue book. The, yeah. Well, no, no. I am talking when they were oh, the really the little <laughs> tiny thin blue books that you ordered from the UK yeah. because that's all they were published. Yeah. And you know, and it made sense to me. And you know, then I watched how you know I, was, I had a great CIO who was tremendously supportive, and we brought order to the chaos that was global IT, and it worked. Yeah. And I don't know why I left. I was there. It was a perfect spot. And now I'm back to where, you know, hey, you know, I just wrote this. Put this into production. Yeah. I tell them all the time. I says, you know, every human being's a mind detector once. If you're going to find it, it will blow up on you. All right. stop, stop the Phoenix Project. Yeah, stop the Phoenix Thank you, Jim. Kim. Um, you know, I actually have kind of a, a dual hat, so certainly with a local hat, but I also have with a national hat, and we're kind of watching this across all the lakes as well. One of the things I, I and having come through an active league and kind of went on hiatus, one of the key things is being able to be real and candid with one another. And so whether we have sales hats on in the day or practitioner, or di different levels of hierarchical management, to be able to come to an association group, a user group like this, and be candid with one another to do exactly what you said, to share ideas, and real ideas. I, I love tonight that we that there wasn't sugar coating, right? That we heard actual client and company names and what they were doing this or that. And not in a disparaging way at all, but just to show, like, okay, because that lends perspective, right? Amdocs means something, or Kaiser means something. You know, you already know which size and complexity, and skill, like, oh, that's like our company, I can relate. So I really appreciate and am looking for candor, continued candor, and that all the different areas, like the, we're gonna need, we need <coughs> practitioners, we need the software vendors, the hardware vendors, because those there's never, you never know where the new ideas are coming from. The different levels of management, we, again, you never know where the next cool idea. So I, I'm hoping that we can attract uh, across the board and then be real candid with each other on these, on these discussions. I, I the other man, I add one more thing, and, and then that is connectedness. I know everyone's always so guarded about the attendee list, whatever, but honestly, the biggest <laughs> thing we could do, one, share the material we've done, and to share one another's contact information. It would be the richest thing, because you, it'll be quick when you're going to, Robbie might say, gosh, what was that idea? I'm, let me, uh, yeah, this guy said that. And to be able to reach out right then, wouldn't that be powerful? Or even if we connect up on LinkedIn, exactly. you know, I, I think um, if we could do that with one another and be respectful. Mm -hmm. sure.